Hello everyone, Lawrence here from Unicorn Reviews and today we're looking at the Garmin Forerunner 645 Music. Don't worry if you're not into the music part, now you can still watch this video because it's the very same watch, it just has some extra memory and a bit of extra software functionality. Anyway, I have never done a video on smartwatches in the past. I bought one but I hated it so much that I just returned it right after. So then why am I looking at the Forerunner watch? Well, because this is not a smartwatch. The Forerunner 645 is actually a fully fledged sports watch with some smart functionality. So let's start with the build on this thing. So both the 645 and the 645 Music can be had in four different colored silicone straps and those are also user replaceable. So if you want to go with something else, you can. If you want like leather or metal or whatever, you can replace it. Now the rubber strap that comes with it, I have the black model here, has these little sipes in it, but it's still not super good at breathing. So it can like stick to your skin a little bit when you're exercising and sweating. So then the watch body, I actually really like the looks of it. So it's a metal bezel and then in the center is a display, it's 240 by 240 pixels, 1.2 inches in diameter. Uh, five button layout, so on the top left there's the light button for the backlight. Uh, there's also like up and down navigation buttons, a start stop button and then there's the back button. Now in between the start stop button and the back button is where you can plug it in to charge. It's a proprietary cable, not a massive fan of it. I would prefer like wireless charging over the Qi standard. Now I really like the display. So it's an always on display. So you don't have to do these ridiculous Apple Watch like gestures just to figure out what time it is. Really awesome. Um, even in super bright studio lights right here, I can read the time. Also at night when it's completely dark, I just press the little backlight button and I can see what time it is. Now I said the charging will do because the charging is actually really good. In about one hour of charging, you can go from completely dead to 100% charge on this thing. And that will last you three to four days with some mild exercise. If you're doing like a enormously long activity, you'll get 12, 13 hours of GPS tracking. So even you crazy Iron Man people will have enough battery life with this watch. Now, as you can see on the box, especially over here, um, this is the music version. It's 50 euros more expensive than the regular 645. And for those 50 euros, you get three and a half gigabytes of storage. So you can put your music files, podcasts, uh, audiobooks directly onto the watch. In a way, it's completely pointless because for me, as a mostly a mountain biker, I always have my phone in my backpack with me and I just use the watch as like a remote to skip between songs and adjust volume and that sort of stuff. But as a runner, I can get it, you know, you put your music on there and you have your wireless headphones and you can just go for a run without a heavy bulky phone in your pocket. It's awesome for that, but I have not actually been able to get it to work. I've been in contact with Garmin on how you even get music on there. You have to use the Garmin Express app to load music on but it doesn't detect the files on there, even though I can play them back perfectly fine on my computer. So that's a bit of the weird thing with the music aspect. Um, they also say it supports streaming services. So right now, in Belgium at least, there's none available. It will work with Deezer Premium, but who the hell uses Deezer? Like, what is Deezer even? I had to Google it. So it's not exactly ideal. So for that reason, I really can't recommend the music version, but as you'll see in the rest of this video, I really love the 645. And similar to that music I just talked about, it also supports Garmin Pay, so you can do um, payments with your watch. But it's not available in Belgium, so I couldn't test it. Anyway, about the feature list of things that actually do work, it's massive, so I'll just like scroll the web page over your screen right now. Let's start with the obvious, um, GPS and GLONASS tracking. It's actually really accurate. I compared it to my Garmin Edge 520. The GPS tracking is really nice and accurate, love it. Um, speed is accurate, it's fast to connect to the GPS satellites, awesome. Uh, it also obviously comes with an optical heart rate monitor, that too, nice and accurate, but if you're someone who's like super conscious about their heart rate, I don't personally care all that much, but if you are crazy about it, you can just get an Ant Plus um, heart rate monitor belt. So I mentioned Ant Plus because there are so many ways to connect anything to this watch. You have Ant Plus, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. So that's heart rates, Garmin lights, um, power meters, step counters, like specifically step counters that go on your shoes. There is such a massive Garmin ecosystem of things you can connect to this watch. It's really awesome. 
and it doesn't just end there. There is a step counter, which is way more accurate, of course, than the one in your phone, a barometric altimeter, awesome for those big day outs on a bike, and a gyro and accelerometer. So when you take this thing swimming, and you can go 50 meters deep while swimming with this one, um, it will also automatically detect the type of stroke you're doing because of all those sensors in there. So that's really awesome for your data afterwards. Talking about data afterwards, what's really big with basically any Garmin product is the Garmin Connect software. You can get it on your smart device or in a browser, so it's always there for you. Uh, and in there you can see way more things that I can show in this video, but the most important ones are your amount of activities that you're doing, how long you're training, um, your step counter, the duration, your power that you're putting out on the bike ride, your cadence or your steps per minute when you're running, um, all that sort of stuff, average speeds, pace, all those things. But there is so much stuff that you can see when using this. And that's what I really like. I mean, to some people, you can just run for the sake of running. And that's awesome. If you can just have an amazing time just on your own running in the woods or with friends, whatever, that's awesome. But geeks like me want data. I, for example, I'm a massive Strava addict. Strava, again, perfectly integrated with this thing. You can even see your KOMs on here, how far you're off of the KOM, how far you're ahead of it. Obviously with me, most of the time you're ahead of it. Just kidding. But it's really awesome that way. You get so much data about anything. It will calculate your VO2 max. It will calculate your FTP. Lovely. So while the watch is called a forerunner, it's not just for runners. As I said, I mostly used it with mountain bikes. However, some of the things like that VO2 max is almost solely calculated on your running effort. So you have to run twice a week in order for that calculation to work. Perfectly fine if you actually do go running, but if you are the type of sports person who does everything except for running, then that is a bit of a unused feature because it will just tell you that you're actually, for me right now, detraining. Although I went for one run last week, but I went for four mountain bike rides. So that's a bit of an odd one. Now with a watch like this, you're not just going to use it while exercise and you're going to wear this one day in day out and that's how I've been using it as well so that smart functionality actually becomes important so I already mentioned you can use it as a remote control for the music on your phone awesome functionality love it but also you can do like quick reply so you'll get an email or a text message from someone and there are some pre-programmed quick replies so you can just reply while you're running like context right now I'm running or I'm driving or whatever you can do that really easily. Um, also, you can read emails on there, your text messages. You can get long previews, short previews. You can also um, set up custom quick replies. So all that sort of stuff is really nice. And the amount of non-sports things that you can do with this watch goes even further. So Garmin also sent me a Verb 360 to test with this watch because you can use the watch to remotely control your Verb action cam. You might say that's stupid, just flick this really convenient button on the side but it's not that easy when the helmet is on your head if you're into motorsports for example the camera can be mounted like on your roll cage behind you or on the bike or wherever if the camera is not easy to access and see while you're accessing it then the remote functionality on the watch is an awesome feature that i wish so much many more products would actually have so you don't have to buy these separate gopro straps that are 50 euros each so while I'm incredibly positive about this watch, it hasn't all been perfect. So as I said, I can't get music to actually play, uh, but there are also some minor bugs in the software. Now, luckily, every time I got a bug, I contacted Garmin just over Twitter and they are ridiculously fast with replies, even on the weekend. So I'm sure that the issues I had will be fixed by the time this video even goes live. But just so you know, I got like a horseback riding badge while I was cycling, so that sort of stuff. The full user experience is really good. Connectivity doesn't drop, so the watch is always connected to my phone. It doesn't drop. Range is like well over 10 meters as well. So my watch can still be on my night table and I'm outside working on my bike and it'll still work, which is awesome. So as an overall conclusion, I really like this watch. I'm going to see if Garmin will actually let me buy it off of them because I really enjoyed using it. Small issues were mostly software based in the Garmin Connect app, but I'm sure they'll fix it really quickly. And a tiny little gripe with it is that I would like a slightly harder metal on the bezel around the watch face, because right now it already has a few tiny scratches in it, which is not a massive issue, but it's just annoying when you spend 450 euros on a smartwatch. 
which is actually a sport watch. Anyway, if you like this video, please hit that thumbs up. If you didn't, dislike it, obviously. And if you want to see more content, subscribe and click the little bell icon because otherwise subscribing is completely pointless on YouTube these days. For now, massive thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.